Hello, uh, this is Dr. John C, a psychologist from Astor Prime Hospital and one of our branches at Suraksha Hospital, Kompali. Uh, today we are going to uh, discuss about a depression. A depression is a mood disorder that causes a person feeling of uh, sadness or loss of interest that characterizes major depression. It can lead to a range of uh, behavioral, emotional, cognitive and physical uh, symptoms. It affects uh, how you feel, to think and behave. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. Feeling of sadness, tearfulness, emptiness or hopelessness, anger, outburst, all these things are there. And then loss of interest is another major symptom which we normally see in patients. And normally they are not able to enjoy what they normally want to enjoy or they will enjoy. Then a lot of sleep disturbances are found in these depressive patients. Tiredness of fatigue, anxiety, agitation and restlessness. These are the things what we have seen in patients who come. The slowness of thinking and uh, slowness of body movement is also seen in the patients. The feeling of worthlessness is seen in the patients and then they have a lot of uh, loneliness feeling or guilt and they feel that uh, their life is of no use and mostly they feel that this is not helping them to be the part of their life. And then they have trouble thinking or let's say cognitive problems, let's say they are not able to concentrate in their life and they are not able to concentrate to the pattern of the thinking what they actually mean to or they have it. And then they have something like unexplained physical problems like a chronic headache or a back pain or neck pain which there might be any uh, physical symptom but they feel that there's a lot of pain and the problems there. We see a lot of patients of depression in a day to day life and uh, a lot of patients who are coming from the corporate backgrounds or coming from a normal background or IT industry or uh, children who are studying and all they all most of the people complain with. But in psychology, we have seen that it mostly start with the teenage, which we are very much concerned about. Because in the time of adolescence, these are the problem starts, and most of us don't even give that uh, uh, actually what has supposed to be give, given. For example, if a lot of people who suffers with some gastric problem or some uh, another fever or something, we take them to a doctor. But if they say that I am feeling sad or I am feeling lonely or and they, they say that you have to manage your life and this is how you can be can be managed this is how it has been said so like if you see these things you can strongly feel that the mindset toward the psychology or mental health is very rare or very less compared to other physical illnesses so if we change our mindset towards it that we can change completely because if it is address in the adolescent time or if it address in that time of teenage most of the problem can be recovered or most, most of the problem can be tackled because most of the time we are not giving that kind of importance supposed to be given to the time of teenage and uh, now modern medicine has changed and modern medicine is helping a lot to patients to address the details uh, symptoms of depression in such a way that it can be treated and it can be treated mostly without much of a disturbances in their life. A lot of people who have taking medications or other uh, psychological therapies and doing a very good job in their life. And if you see these things like a lot of people they complain of uh, depression. Actually that is not depression. It has to be clinically defined. Every depression or every sadness or every lack of interest, not having sleep, appetite is not depression. Clinical depression definition is different. So for that, the ASM 4 or 5 revised is also there, which can be given to the, uh, which can be used by a patient to understand ex exactly where is the problem, what is the problem they have facing it and all. But being a psychologist, I will suggest that if the lifestyle of the patient is managed and then they uh, get that uh, training from the uh, point of view of the relaxation therapy, this also helps in the patient's management of the changes whatever happens in the brain and the cognitive behavior therapy or the fantastic therapy which has been used to widely worldwide therapy it is and if it is done through a proper channel or a proper way, most of the depressive symptoms and uh, most of the depression 
problems can be taken care with the help of psychological uh, therapies or inputs because most of the time we are seen the patient just believe in uh, medication but if it works parallelly the psychiatry and psychiatrist work parallelly i uh, think the patient will benefit more compared to only one side but in most of the cases it is not required that you should visit a psychiatrist psychiatrist only it is without medication also things can be taken care of and can be a patient can lead a good life normally in our clinic we don't call patients because we don't believe any patient before diagnosed or before defining the symptoms it is a patient so anyone and everyone can visit a psychologist because to understand what is the exact problem they have to it's not that they should have a problem and then they should visit it is like a symptom check like what we normally do a diagnosis for a blood check or a bp check like that we can visit a psychologist talk to them and then they can help us in checking what exactly has to be done so that way we can take care of the uh, depression problems and all in who standard says that it is 1 in 10 people are having depression in india and 1 in 10 is a big number so that which we have to address this problem and without addressing this problem there are a lot of other things which is going to fall into place and which is going to disturb us a lot so that's why we have to be so understanding towards the patients so that they can understand their problem as well as the problem occurs because of the symptoms of the depression so that is how we need to understand the complete uh, terminology of it is not depression it is a clinical depression which has to be treated which has to be treated with medication other things can be treated without medication as well the problem and the symptoms are uh, another uh, fantastic thing which uh, people understand in their life is uh, what we normally call in our language is anxiety and even anxiety is something uh, which a lot of people have but they don't you know, visit for a mental health professional or a mental health person or a mental health uh, counselor or a psychiatrist or a psycho psychologist or psychotherapist even it adds a uh, mental health disorder characterized by the feeling of worry and anxiety or fear that are strong enough to interfere with the day to day life or activities it can be panic attack it can be obsessive compulsive disorder it can be social anxiety disorder it can be post traumatic stress disorder a list of a long list of things and mostly it happens because of the irrational fear what a person patient have so everyone feels anxious now and then it's very natural that to feel anxious but if it is happens and it is interfering in your day to day life it is not natural it is Uh, like is irrational in some regards and it is can be a problematic anxiety can be a, a normal emotion like uh, what we have in anger but uh, sometimes it is more and which is when it interferes in our day to day life with that has to be addressed and it is very important that we should address so like for example in sort of situation we feel uh, nervous for no reasons for example writing an exam or uh, attending an interview that's a very natural and normal phenomena but unnecessary getting this stuff for example for example in exam time now which is going on a lot of children feel that they don't think about the exam they think about the result which actually is not uh, prob- probably not required at that point of time because it is not it is a time of exam i have to write an exam result is secondary because uh, when we write an article which is yeah, recently written which is called as numbers cannot decide my destiny so that means and even if you have failed nobody is going to ask you that uh, which which class you have failed so there is no point in getting disturbed because of that result and anything so if the question is how you good how nicely you take care of your mindset is very important because anxiety can happen for example in panic panic disorders so we see a lot of uh, you know, people visit uh, cardiologists saying that i have heart pain and it's a very severe pain and where they feel that it's all sweating and it's all a chest pain and palpitation increase and high bp and all but when they visit us a cardiologist he says that no nothing is there you just have to take this medicine and you will be fine but after few days it again had happened and they get all these medical tests and everything comes normal but once they visit a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a clinical psychologist that helps them to understand that what exactly is happening and how it can be tailored so that how it can be tackled with them and then how they can manage the symptoms in their home itself just having a some kind of a sessions with a psychologist or a clinical psychologist another thing is like sad that is social anxiety disorder where it will be overwhelming or worrying or self conscious and about everyday 
social situations like people who are afraid of uh, climbing a lift elevators or the people where a lot of gatherings are there they are disturbed with that they are not able to face the crowd so that can be one of the issues like that a lot of issues like that they, recently we have seen a patient who just felt that somebody pricked and he might have got infected with some kind of a disease and he got into the blood test the urine test and everything but nothing found there so there are a lot of anxiety or a phobia just happens and then there are uh, generalized anxiety disorders where it is there and you feel excessive unrealistic worry so normally what we call as phobia phobia is a fear anyone can have it can be a natural phenomenon but uh, phenomenon but a phobia is something like irrational fear which happens to most of the people but it can be tackled it can be tackled with the help of a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a counselor which will help him to understand what is happening why it is happening and how it can be tackled so like that the symptoms can be panic fear uneasiness sleep problems not being able to stay calm or um, shortness of breath heart palpitations dry mouth and nausea muscle tensions and at times when dizzy is as well so like that there are so many things which is going to happen to a patient and then they need to realize that i can control because i am the best doctor for myself so like that a lot of patients can manage but not all the patients can manage it and as for the who thing it says that a lot of people are suffering with anxiety but they don't go for help so with this video which we like to say that there are a lot of people if you can and go to a good psychologist or psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist which you know uh, that it's not based on the ratings or reviews of other people you just have to understand going them and then make a decision that this is what for example when you go into a dinner or something you shell out something so like that you go visit and if you feel that he is able to convince you with us whatever he is telling you and will help you out take the call there so like that you will come to a good specialist who is aware of or maybe you ask a person who already went to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist they will help you to how to find out a good psychologist or a counselor to understand or address your psychological illness or anxiety problem that way it will be good for you to understand anxiety can be tackled without the help of uh, other things like maybe medication at times can be used but mostly without medication can be handled or tackled it depends on patient to patient it is individual uniqueness you cannot say that medicine is not required you cannot say medicine is required and a lot of things can be there it's psychological help can be helpful sometimes psychiatric help is also helpful but both ways it apparently if goes it will be always helpful because both psychiatrists way of understanding anxiety is different and psychologists way of understanding things are different so both ways work together it will be a fantastic thing because end of the day the patient should be benefited out of, out of this and that which helps the patient to really understand that how to tackle things in life and without disturbing their day to day life because anxiety can happen to anyone to everyone in their life and uh, this is you we need to understand that anxiety can be addressed in such a way that you need to really follow the pattern maybe lifestyle changes can help you a lot and having exercise breathing exercises like normally we know a clinic we do this relaxation therapy we have found a lot of patients are getting benefited because of this relaxation therapy followed by cognitive behavior therapy cbd only cannot make a difference that other things are, has to be added to it but relaxation therapy and cbd is the best model to tackle the anxiety symptoms and that symptoms can be managed having a good routine because it mostly most of us cannot have a good routine or routine life but if can be manageable if once you are able to manage i think things and the symptoms can be tackled at a far distance and you will be able to live a good quality life it's uh, stress if the moment i do use the word stress i think Uh, most of the people will think that oh i am getting stressed out now and um, i am stressed out for no reason at times i am stressed out for so many reasons at times and stress has become a part and parcel of our life i have seen a lot of patients who say that i am stressed out might be there are reasons for example exam that's for stress job interview that might be stress coming back to home that might be a stress so a lot of children nowadays are talking about stress which is not difficult or different why because even children are nowadays feeling stress for so and so and so reason because the competition and the other thing which is the pressure peer pressure to can be can be parental pressures or not ask anyone stress is there 
stress is started as the flight and fight syndrome. If you are able to, you will fight. If you are not able to, you will fight in a situation. So it is Hansel who has given us this the word as stress. But actually, in our day-to-day -day life, the stress is a feeling, or emotional, or a physical tension. Stress is an everyday term and a feeling of people have. It can come from any event or thought that when they are overloaded or in struggle to cope with the withdrawal, makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Stress is a body reaction to a challenge or demand. Like when the resources are less and demand is more, you feel stress. The pressure is more, they feel stress. So like that, that lot of patients who come, then they have a lot of issues with that, uh, the stress. And then that result into a lot of heart problems, uh, diabetes, obesity, depression, skin problems, and uh, problems with sleep, disturbances, and all this stuff. A lot of uh, intentions, uh, a problem feel that, a lot of patients who feel that the stress is something which is going to disturb me. And for small issues, they just make it very big and then they want to see that it has to be treated and actually they don't need a treatment but they feel that it has to be treated and once they do it, they disturb their life cycles and the quality of life is totally disturbed. Stress management can be handled, can be given to any uh, anyone because the stress management is something which can be handled in a subtle way. A patient can lead a good quality life with the help of stress management. Stress management and the symptoms can be over sweating, pain in back or chest, cramp in muscles or spasms, fainting, headache, heart diseases, like that. Emotional symptoms can be anger, anxiety, burnouts, concentration issues, a feeling of insecurity, irritability, a nail biting, um, and uh, sometimes restlessness or sadness. Behavioral symptoms can be food craving. A no? lot of patients complain. Complain that when I'm in stress, I feel that I feel like having too much of food, which I normally that's not me. And then they have a sadness and outburst, and then they have withdrawal symptoms or a frequent crying and disturbing others. Like that, the stress can be a totally disturbing for most of the people, most of us. And every time we look for uh, first aids, but actually, if we see that stress in a very gentle way. The stress can be managed with having a proper routine, exercise, having a good water, having a good sleep, having a good relationship, smiling, having a good face or smiling face or uh, having a genuine smile on a face. That can help a little major way that a smile can, uh, like Mother Teresa said, a smile can do wonders. Actually, that's what it is. If you have this uh, smile on your face, uh, people can help you and you can get help as well. So like that, there are so many things which has to be addressed. But stress is something which we need to answer in our day to day life. We have seen a lot of patients who, who disturb their life cycle. They don't do the way it has to be like for getting up in the morning. They don't do and then when they are late, they just make their life messed up. So if that can be taken care of, the half an hour, uh, we normally say that if you are getting up by 6 o'clock, try to get up by 6, 5.30. If you are getting up by 6.30, get up by 6. That half an hour difference, what you are going to generate or create in your life, that can actually change you completely. That half an hour can make a big difference in your life. Because then you can do a good exercise, or you can do a relaxation therapy, you can do a breathing technique, you can do a meditation, and all these things can help. And timely food, which is not happening nowadays. We need to have a timely food, and which can help you in long, wrong race of your life. And that can a major thing. Stress is something which can be good. For example, deadline is approaching. You the stress. If you take the stress, and once your result is happy or result is good, you will be much more happy. So stress is the way you, the, how you take it. It is not the stress which is going to disturb you. Stress is what you, how you take it. If you take it in a good spirit or a positive spirit, things can change, and it can change for the good. And then you can lead a good and positive life and the stress actually be a something which can make you feel this is what my life is and I'm going to decide that so if I'm taking a stress in a good spirit will be very good because taking stress first thing saying that having stress is something I don't want to I want to make my life stress free so that is the one word which you can take I want to lead a stress-free life so stress-free can give you a good life and you can have a quality life in the near future. A negative thinking. 
I went thinking that the saints learn that patients who visit us for negative thinking, they say that um, many time whenever I want to feel it, I want to, I'm just whenever I'm just thought or a think, okay, it's always coming in negative that something will happen to me, my family, you know. This we have been seeing from long time, and every patient's definition of their negative thinking is different. But what is negative thinking? If there is something, something which is called as negative thinking, the thinking which you feel make it negative. It is all happens in the mind, and we we always say it all in the mind. So I think it's really that's right to say that. Normally we use the term positive thinking, and I always uh, pressurize or I always put my effort towards thinking positive because if you have a process of having a thinking positive approach, which most of us don't do normally, but if you have a thinking positive approach. The negative thinking can be tackled. For example, when you when you are in a positive thinking, you say that all things going to happen in a positive way. But when you are in the process of an approach towards a thinking positive fashion, you will always say that even if it is go wrong, I will be able to handle it. I will be able to tackle it. So I feel that once you are, or normally that the normal nomenclature saying that if I am able to manage my thinking, or if I am having a thinking positive attitude. I will be able to manage the negative thinking, and this negative thinking can make me what I want to be. Because if I'm, if I don't have a thinking which is negative, it's always good to have negative thinking. But it's not that you lead your life with negative thinking. So you always have a something to approach or attitude towards thinking positive. And thinking positive is something which can change, take you to a long distance. And negative thinking. Lot of people have this feeling that something is going to happen wrong, and this is if I take do, if I do this way, if I go that way, if I go on the road, something will happen. It's all cooked in the brain. So once you have a peaceful mind, how you can have a peaceful mind? Lot of people nowadays are struggling to read books. The moment they read for two minutes, they feel asleep or they feel disturbed. If you are able to read the books, you will be happily reading it. And once you make it a habit, like 15 minutes reading, and then slowly increase the time, you will end up reading a book per day, or two, uh, one book from for two days. It depends on how you want to tackle it. For example, morning walk. If you do this morning walk, and then walk the talk, and if you do this, you will be able to manage your thinking, negative thinking as well with that, because you are getting up in the morning, which is that's up there in your mindset that I will not be able to get up in the morning. But when you are going to when you are getting up and when you are going for a walk, you will be much more happy and much more conducive towards your own nature attitude. Once you are able to do the change and you are able to make that difference in your own mindset, that I am going to change my mindset, I am going to be more positive or I will be thinking positive, positive thinking or thinking positive. I vote I vote for thinking positive because I have seen. Once you have an idea that I want to tackle, if the situation goes this way or that way, I know how to challenge it and how to. Oh, I know how to overcome it. So, if a people comes with a negative thinking, the positive thinking, positive approach is much better approach compared to positive thinking. So, like that, if we understand the beauty of thinking positive, the trans negativity or negative thinking can be transformed in, in such a way that when you are planning something and something goes wrong. So you know that if this is plan A is not working, I can switch off very well to switch plan B, and then B is not working, I very well switch off to plan C. This is how you can overcome your negative thinking. And the day-to-day -day life, you can do a lot of stuff like this. And if you visit a psychologist or a professional, a mental health professional, it is not the bad that if you go and visit, they will build a brand you as having some issues. Normally, I don't diagnose a patient. I have been working since long time, but I don't diagnose a patient. That means I am not writing a diagnosis saying that you are a negative person, or you are you are so and so person, or you are so and so problems you have, so and so disorders you have, so and so syndromes you have. It will help you to understand why I have a negative thinking, why I can get out of this negative thinking, and how I can get out of this negative thinking. Because these things can happen to anyone and everyone. Every day we do a lot of things in our life. Negative thing, for example, while going on the road, I may I can get met with an accident, but it's not natural every time. For example, a lot of people say that this bus. Last time we heard in the news that this bus uh, fall in that uh, avalanche or fall uh, met with an accident. Not every time the train or uh, anything. Every time it's not going to happen. But the fear of that something is going to happen or having a negative mindset in our own thinking that can disturb us. But 
if you approach taking is that the thinking positive pattern or attitude of that side you can actually change your quality of life and you can change your mindset and you can be the person of your choice and you can be the what you want to be overcoming your negative thinking thank you